Welcome to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is Malin. Oh, short, sweet, and to the point. I thought I would go the opposite of the energy that you were giving out. Oh, I see. So, uh, yes, I am the Pope in question. My name is Maylin, formerly Reverend Steve, the founder of the Church of Ed Wood. Actual thing worth a Google. This is episode 441 of the podcast, and I didn't go and do a bunch of research about the life of Wolfman Jack, but I'm going to assume that he... Macho Man Randy savaged his throat. Yes. So like uh hey, I I'm I'm just uh this person when I'm not wrestling, but then when I'm wrestling, I'm gonna be talking like this brother. Yeah. And he did it so much that that just became his voice. I imagine he wasn't the greatest grandparent. Calm down, little baby. I've got you. You know, yeah. so I'm assuming that that's what happened to Wolfman Jack. Because you do see him for a second here talking normally, but I'm assuming that that went away pretty quick. If if it wasn't if it wasn't for the success of this week's movie, uh, American Graffiti. I bet Shaw Na Na just wouldn't exist. Oh, no, and we wouldn't have the Fonz either. Or Grease. Yeah. Probably. Fascinating. The, like, ripple effect, like the, the butterfly wings. Yes. The butterfly effect. Uh, this is episode 441 of the podcast, which means that, obviously, there have been 440 episodes before this one. Why would we lie about that? That's really weird. Don't do the math. Yes. Today, we're going to be uh, talking about a bunch of random things in the beginning. I've got a really great chap, and uh, this week's movie is American Graffiti, the prequel to uh, Star Wars. Uh, it, we're going to be playing a game during that. That's going to be really fun, and uh, I, I, I'm just really excited. I've I've got a a pitch for you, Bunny, for a movie. Uh, when we get to American Graffiti, because I have a serious problem with this week's film, but we'll get to that, okay? You have a serious problem with this week's a film. A serious problem with this movie. Okay. A serious I problem, but we're going to get to it. We're going to get to it. Okay. All right! Yes. It's time once again for one of those different sort of openings. Not necessary a news smattering per se, but some Little nuggies of news and also a couple of topics that we're just going to throw out there and discuss top of our head like. So let's do this. Are you ready, Bunford and Sons? Yes. All right. Let's do this. According to the Washington Post, and this is true, white people are now more likely to die of COVID than black people. Wow. A blow for whites, but a win for equality. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so previously, black people used to be more than three times as likely as whites to die from COVID. But at the buzzer, here comes white people <laughs> with the win. Yeah. yeah. I'm assuming it's because so many of them are fearful of COVID and let's just say science. Yes. To be fair, uh, you know, you could worry about COVID or you could worry about getting a table at the Cracker Barrel, you know? Oh, fuck so. the Cracker Barrel. They have menu items that I do not approve of. Like what? Uh, not sure. I haven't been but, there. Uh, but I, I heard long. somebody in my church said something. Somebody so in I don't go to Cracker Box. Gotcha. Cracker Barrel. Cracker Box. Cracker Jacks. Bonnie, uh, while watching this week's movie, American Graffiti, a modern day classic that I have a serious problem with, but we're going to get to that in the second half of the show. I thought 
You know what would be funny? Just a just a small amount of extra work for you. But wouldn't it be funny if we wrap up the podcast, okay? Uh, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams, and I am A. Lynn, and on behalf of Natasha and Eleanor and Maxwell and Caitlin and everybody else in this house, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. do 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 Cut and print. Then... You do a freeze frame and you put different uh, end credit postscripts. Well, that's that's not going to happen yeah. without any warning to prepare. No, no, I'm not saying now. I'm just okay. saying in future episodes, like the show can end and then it's just a freeze frame. And uh, May Lynn is now a writer in Canada. Yes. Bunny Williams was last seen in Vietnam, missing yes. in action, presumed scared. Yes. I just thought that that would be funny, and then you could do something different every episode. It would be a more fun ending. I always like it when things do that. I'd like to think that American Graffiti is the sequel to Stand By Me. Okay, yeah. Because isn't Richard Dreyfus a writer? Yeah. Yeah. So uh Stand By Me is the first film, even though it came out second, and it shows Richard Dreyfus's character when he was much younger. And then the sequel, which came out first, showed his character as a teenager going off to college. Yes. Yes. It's the same character because he's a writer and he's writing the story of Stand By Me in that movie. So it all makes sense. That's that's how I cast everything in my mind. So, uh, Mal, Mal, is this on YouTube? Yes. Yes, okay. So on YouTube, uh, they're doing... Who, what channel even is this that's doing this? Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. Okay. Cartoon Network's YouTube channel is running like a 24-hour <laughs> do marathon right now. On on YouTube, they're just doing a, a 30th anniversary. For Scooby Doo's 30th anniversary? No, for, for, the for Oh, for Cartoon Network's 30th anniversary. They're doing a Scooby Doo marathon showing all these old Scooby Doo episodes and then some Scooby Doo movies. They're doing that Cyber Chase movie right now. I hope they show the really horrible WWE movies. There's two of them yes. where WWE yeah. teamed up with Scooby-Doo. It's the worst. I I know they're not going to show Supernatural, but they should show they Supernatural. Should. <laughs> but um, it's it, I'm just really upset because I've been watching it for a while. It's just been on the TV. <clears throat> and uh, so far, no original Scooby-Doo. So far, no Laugh Olympics. No. Oh. What the heck? I'm just upset. I'm just upset. Who would have thought that the director behind the live-action Scooby-Doo movie would eventually be given the reins of the DC Cinematic Universe? Yes. Did you hear about this? James Gunn, yeah. Yeah, he is. He is. That's the thing about. Uh, I recently saw Black Adam. Um, <coughs> it's fine. It's just fine. It's not the best. It's not the worst. It's fine. But the reason why I really liked it is, unlike so many other DC movies, it actually tied into other films. Uh huh. Amanda Waller from Suicide Squad showed up and sent a team. And Black Adam got his powers from the same wizards who gave the powers to Shazam. And uh, uh, spoiler alert, that's not really a spoiler alert because it's already been spoiled a million times by a million different people. Superman's in at in the end credit sequence of uh, yes. Black Adam. Uh, Henry Cavill, the Witcher, is in it. And so finally... This is a DC movie that actually cares about continuity for once. 
Yes. And it was kind of surprising to see. And I liked that. So it seems as if uh, DC is actually starting to give a shit about their movies and tying them all together. And I'm really excited about that. I'm excited for James Gunn. I'm excited for James Gunn being in charge of DC. I never thought I'd say this, but I'm excited for the DC Cinematic Universe. I, I, I would... I, he really, really needs to do some callbacks to Slither, though. He made Bright Burn. Uh-huh. And DC said, give him all the films. Are you sure? Brightburn was really effed up. It give him all the films. So like Romeo oh, and Juliet. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway. So over the past few weeks, the media has been uh, covering this low budget indie horror movie called Terrifier 2. Have yeah. you heard about this, Bunny? I've, You've heard I've about been seeing pictures, and I've seen pictures of that clown before. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so there's reports all over the place of uh, people fainting, people vomiting, people having to be carried out of theaters by ambulances. This is true uh, because of how gory this horror film is. Literally, you just search Terrifier 2, and the news articles will pile up. Here are just a, a few smattering of uh, tweets. Just so y'all know, I'm a changed person after seeing Terrifier 2. This is the goriest movie I've ever seen in my life. That's from at Sonya 25S. Uh, uh, Terrifier. This is from Kev Resurrection. Terrifier 2 opening kill actually made me lightheaded. Uh, just watch Terrifier 2. You guys, my brain is traumatized. Gruesome is the only way to describe Terrifier 2. Rarely does a film come along and go absolutely nuts with violence and gore like this. That one scene in, in the first has been topped easily, and I doubt they'll ever top it again. That girl got absolutely destroyed. That shit is bananas. Uh, uh, yeah, so... It, People are freaking out about this horror movie. So uh, just to be clear, uh, I did not see Terrifier 2. Okay. I saw Terrifier 1 and then saw Terrifier 2. Double feature! Okay. For the sake of the podcast, I did a double feature a few days ago. 2007's Terrifier and 2022's Terrifier 2, which is allegedly causing people to throw up and or faint. Uh, and a little bit of background for me, I was a major wuss and avoided all horror films until I was in an armed robbery while closing one night at the bookstore. And, uh, <laughs> after the, when you have a loaded gun to your face and someone saying, give us all the money in the safe or we're going to kill you suddenly saw isn't that big of a deal. Yes. So, uh, I, I, we've been real busy this month a lot of things to do a lot of places to go a lot of meetings and a lot of school events and oh i've got to take this person to the doctor but then i got to take this person here but then i got to drop this person off and it's just been non-stop and then the weekends come but we there's no uh rest on the weekends because oh we there's a trick-or-treating event happening here there's a trick-or-treat event happening here We've got to uh, we've got to go to Sam's Club. We've got to do all these different things. So uh, on Monday or Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, I finally had a day where all the kids are going to school. I'm going to be at home. So I, I, I binge watched Terrifier and Terrifier 2. Um, here's the thing, though. The first Terrifier is actually a sequel to the film All Hallows Eve, which is one of those uh, Tales from the Crypt sort of movies where it's like, here are three scary short films certain to scare you. And all of those films in that movie featured a character named Art the Clown. Yeah. And then that film, All Hallows Eve, was a feature film version of a short film. So... Even if you start with Terrifier 1, 
you're you're already behind. Yeah, okay. So once you're starting the film, it's a bit uh, complicated because they're already talking about these uh, this grisly murder, these grisly murders that happened, and you're like, did I miss something? But anyway, uh, uh, where's where's the tweet? I tweeted I tweeted this, and I don't think I think that most people won't understand this, but I know you will, Bunny. Here it is. I'm a half hour into the first Terrifier, and I've seen enough Herschel Gordon Lewis, enough Lloyd Kaufman, enough Toby Hooper. Enough Eli Roth, enough Roger Corman to spot a cheap ass grindhouse movie when I see one. Yes. And I really do think that the first Terrifier is one of those movies that would have scarred me for life like 25 years ago, but now I'm 40 something and I'm sitting here watching Art the Clown. So there's a naked woman and she's chained from the ankles upside down, and Art the Clown gets a uh, an old rusty uh, saw blade. And from her privates down, just saws her in half. Okay. And there's blood everywhere, and it's very graphic. And uh, <clears throat> people talk on Twitter about how that's one of the grossest kills of all time. But he, I'm 40 now, and I'm just sitting here going, Hello, bone is strong! <laughs> There's no way this skinny ass clown can easily saw a woman in half. Yeah. After only like, you know, a minute of sawing. Yeah. That, that's going to be a workout to do that. Yeah. yeah these it, people it, have uh, never uh, cut a pork roast. Yeah. Like a skinny clown isn't going to cut a woman in half. You need one of those, uh, one of those eighties preachers who would, who would t- tear, um, uh, phone books in half. The power team. You need the power team for that. Yeah. So uh, the first Terrifier, I I didn't like it because, like, I saw Terrifier and I saw Terrifier too. This is what I know about the bad guy. His name is Arthur Clown. He doesn't speak. Sometimes he comes back to life. That's all I know. I don't know why he's doing this. I don't know why sometimes he can come back to life. I, it's basically just El Generico, the clown, kills people, the movie. Yes. You know, he just appears and kills. And yeah, the kills are really gory and really bloody, but so the first Terrifier film was made for a whopping $100,000. Okay. So when it makes like half a million dollars, just like selling it online and 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 as a direct to DVD, then they can say, "Oh wow, this was a huge hit. Let's make a sequel." So they made Terrifier two. Uh, they upped the budget for Terrifier two, big time. You're not going to believe it. Terrifier two is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Whoa. Whoa! Calm down, million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Yes. It, and look, I'm trying to be a better person. I'm transitioning. Tomorrow will be my 20th week on a, a hormone replacement therapy. I'm, I'm trying to change and, and be a better person. I don't drink anymore. And, and I, I go to church every Sunday. And, uh, I, but back in the day, let's just say previous me, like when the woman is being cut in half in the first Terrifier film and people are going, oh man, that's so gross. That's so bloody. Previous me knows a sex doll when they see one. Yes. It's obvious that, that like body double, body double. Real doll covered in blood. Yeah. I know a real doll when I see one. But to a but to a person who doesn't know uh 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 sex dolls and horror films, then sure, Terrifier One is pretty scary. <coughs> uh, so Terrifier Two, it's got a bigger budget. First off, it's over two hours long. You need to chill out, oh, Ingmar good Bergman. God, no. Oh, and Chris Jericho's in it? What? 
was Johnny Mundo busy that Saturday? Probably. Probably. He's really popular. And I, I was so pissed off because Chris Jericho has like mid-level billing. But when he does show up, it's during the mid credit sequence. He's there to say 12 lines and then disappear. He is a like he's a nurse at a hospital. It's Halloween. And what is he doing? He's on his laptop watching Plan 9 from outer space. OK. And now. I am absolutely OK with Will Smith. Because I wanted to slap Terrifier 2 in the face. Okay. I wanted to walk up to the makers of Terrifier 2, slap them across the face, and say, Get my movie out your damn mouth! Yeah. Pissed. I was so upset. So, yeah, the violence in Terrifier 2 is very gory. It's very bloody. It's very over the top. But also, again, it's it's fascinating how easily bone can be ripped apart by a by an anorexic clown. And it's, so there's this really bloody kill in in the middle of Terrifier 2. It was leaked online. And this woman is scalped and just the top of her head is just taken off, scalped. And then she's slid across the float, the throat. And then she's cut a bunch of times. All over the back. She's just bleeding everywhere. And then, uh, oh, yeah, in the beginning, it, uh, Art the Clown gets a scalpel and just slices her right here. Cuts through half of her eye and half of her face right here. So she's half blinded. She's scalped, torn, cut up, mutilated. He, he, he gets this arm and he bends it the wrong way. There's a snap. And then he keeps bending it until he's able to rip the arm right off. The woman is still conscious, is able to get off the bed and almost make it to the phone. Okay. No! That's not how humans work. No. It's ridiculous. It's it's silly. So, yeah, uh, it, it, there are stories of people vomiting and freaking out over this movie. Oh man, this is so much. I I can only assume. I can only assume that those people just don't know horror movies. No. Or if they do, they know modern horror movies that are like 90% jump scares. Yeah. When I lived in California, my wife and I stayed up until 2 a.m. one night drinking like crazy and watching Cannibal Holocaust. And we were laughing throughout that film. Okay. I did not have a problem with Terrifier 2. But yeah, no. I imagine if if you're, uh, if you've, oh, I've watched horror movies. I've seen uh, The Conjuring 1 and 2 and Annabelle Comes Home. Okay, well, those aren't really horror movies. And... Yeah, this movie's gore is going to freak you out. I'm assuming you've never had an Egyptian feast. <laughs> I got so cocky watching Terrifier 2 ha a over an hour into the movie that everyone is like vomiting at and getting squeamish of. I warmed up spaghetti and meatballs. Nice. While watching this supposedly disgusting movie. So. It felt like a low budget trauma trauma type film that hit it big for some reason. And, and it, it, it did nothing for me. And also, you should have at least trimmed it down to a tight hour 45. It is ridiculous that it's this long. Over two hours. I, I can't imagine. I, I can't yeah. imagine sitting through it for that long. Well, uh, people complained that the first Terrifier just, there was no characterization. So I think that, that the director said, okay, well, for the next one, I'll put in a shit ton of characterization. And it's like, okay, I am really rooting for the, 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 sur the last surviving woman. What do they call them? 
Survivor Girl. Survivor Girl. Uh, I like. I am rooting for the survival girl by the end of the movie, but adding characterization to your horror film doesn't mean over two hours. This isn't Waterworld. No, no. So what does Art the Clown sit down and start like reading Sheila? Uh, Sylvia Plath. He never speaks. I have no idea how he killed himself in the first film and came back to life. I have no idea why he's killing people. I have no idea where he came from. It, no questions have been answered at all. Yeah. Period. After two films, technically three, technically three and a half. And I still have no idea who the F Arthur the clown is. And I'm a little bit disappointed in that. That being said, I fully support Terrifier and Terrifier 2, and I will absolutely watch a third one. Because this film was made for $250,000. It's the number eight movie in America and is made about $7 million. That is nice. huge. That is huge. Yeah. You know, they, this was originally supposed to just be a direct-to-DVD sort of thing, but the studio said, let's release it in a few theaters. And then people in those theaters were, like, vomiting and freaking the fuck out and walking out of the theater, and they said, okay, a few more. Okay, a few more. This weekend, it opened in 1,000 theaters across America. Good for you. Nice. You know? I support the movie. It's not really that uh, it's gory, but like, I mean, if if you if you've seen gore, then yeah, no, this isn't that yeah. big of a deal. If you saw Terrifier and Terrifier 2, I bet you'd laugh and have a good time with it. Probably. So so that's Terrifier 2. I support it. Not really that scary, but I 100 percent support it. OK, Bunny. Yes. I want to talk about a new video game that just came out. I don't talk about video games. I have finally gotten to that age where I realize I'm done. Okay. I'm just done. Every once in a while, I'll get into something like uh, Fall Guys. I'm really into the game Fall Guys. But I'm done. I've stopped looking through the video game section at the store because it's like I'm not one of those people who can just sit down for five hours and play a game like I, I i can't do it i can't do it i'm I'm not that person anymore so i don't really care about give me a warning okay but this nugget of video game news is hilarious so <laughs> it's getting harder and harder to find physical media these days you know you, you, movies come out as a digital release and then come out as a DVD. It's getting hard to find DVDs. It's getting hard to find CDs. It's easier now for me to find records than it is for me to find CDs. Really? Yeah. I go to Walmart. There's a huge section of LPs and then like this many CDs. It's actually quite surprising. And also video games. Uh, downloading is becoming like the main thing. You can download a game on day one. You can download a game. You won't have to go to the store, leave the house. You can just download it from your system. And that's great. You know, that you can download a game without having to go to a store, but these games are so huge. We're talking 90 gigabytes, a hundred gigabytes, 200 gigabytes. That's a lot. So anyway, uh, Call of duty, modern warfare two came out like two days ago. Okay, it came out on October 28th. And uh, a lot of people pre ordered it online and like on Amazon and stuff like that. So, like on Wednesday and Thursday of this past week, people started getting the game Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. You will not believe how much data is on the CD for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. No. 70 megabytes. Okay. That's it. Just 70 megabytes. I mean, this podcast will be bigger than that video game. That's because if you bought a physical copy of the video game, essentially, you got a 
AOL online disc that just takes you to the website where you then download the game. Uh huh. If there's okay. ever a sign that they're trying to get rid of actual physical video games, this is the sign. You're basically, if you're going to a store to buy Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, you're basically purchasing an empty box. Yes. It just has 70 megabytes, which is just a confirmation that you purchased the game, and then it sends you to the website where you just download it as if you would if you were at home. It's ridiculous. Video games are going, physical video games are going bye-bye, and that's just sad. I guess you just well, can. Yeah. Uh, unless you have a Switch, that's one good thing about the Nintendo Switch is that you can. That is a very portable game system, you know. Yeah. So uh, one last thing, Bonnie, did you see the trailer for Ant Man? Uh, yes, I have. Okay. So the trailer for Ant Man three back in training just dropped, and without a doubt, the star of the show, without a doubt, the star of the trailer is a great line reading from actor Ruben Rabasa, a.k.a. the old guy from I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, who wants nothing more than a good a steering wheel that doesn't whip out of the window while I'm driving. Yes. And he has that great line in the beginning that just steals the show. The Thank you, Spider-Man! Yes. And so I think now it's official. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson, the greatest show on TV. Without a doubt, the best thing that Netflix has ever done is now a part of the MCU. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping that they just incorporate I think you should leave with Tim Robinson more into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Tony Stark has so much money, he can buy all the shirts that Dan flashes. Miss Marvel flies in to Earth from space and said, hey, what did you guys do with my tables? They're <laughs> filthy. Peter Parker's high school principal is just there, you know, tugging on his shirt. Peter goes, hey, principal. Hey, cool shirt. Thanks. It's a TC top by TC. It's a TC top by TC tugger. They're the only shirt with a tugging knob. Loki. Seems like someone who has slicked his hair back and eaten sloppy steaks before. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a bunch of other ones, but I'm not going to do them. So that's been the monologue. Uh, we are going to take a short break because Zoom, which is what we're using for this, will only let us record 45 minutes at a time. 40 or 45? I think it's 45. 45? Okay. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, it's going to be time for Steve's Historic Approximations, and we will be talking about the hilarious uh, struggles that one specific horror movie franchise had with the Motion Picture Association of America. It's going to be really, it's it's really good, and also there's a shap within a shap. Oh. A mini shap inside of a shap, a like a Russian nesting doll of learning. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. It's a really good uh, historic approximation. I think you're really going to like it. So uh, uh, stay tuned for more The Pope on Film. I don't know how to do, 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 do. I'll just go for it. Do, do, do. <laughs> do and break <laughs> 